a couple yeah. minutes. Good morning. Good morning. So this week um, we continue to work, uh, I'm continuing to get uh, department budgets in, uh, starting the review process on those. I have most everyone's, there's a couple of stragglers, but um, for the most part those are into me in the munis form. Um, so I'm beginning to work on those and then through this process we'll be converting into Cassell, which I'm sure uh, Ann will touch more on that process. We pulled the plug yesterday on Munis and started the migration to Cassell. Um, so I'll leave the details of that to Ann to go over. Um, also doing a lot of work with uh, Public Works. Um, we've come up against somewhat of a bu buzzsaw with the <clears throat> DOT and their high street paving project. Um, so high, st high Street Paving is going to go from Church Street all the way through High Street up to, uh, well, up to just this side of the Beachland Road intersection. It's also going to go up Down East Highway to the Myrick Street intersection and then across Short Street. It's a two-inch mill with paving. Um, the issue is that all of our uh, utilities are going to need to be adjusted uh, along High Street, which t is to the tune of 68 um, rims and covers for uh, wastewater predominantly, and another 60 to some odd um, water valves. The rims and covers are going to be a minimum expectation of cost is $2,500 per. And that doesn't include the cost of the purchase of the rims and covers. In addition to that, the water shutoffs, water valves, are another six to six to seven hundred dollars per. And so, when you do a little quick math, we're talking purchasing new rims and covers and the adjustments. You're talking in excess of two hundred thousand um, dollars. So. Obviously, this was not something that we, I mean, we've only learned of this paving project within the last six months or so, so it wasn't on our radar for budgeting purposes for FY24. Um, so the anticipation is that we're going to have to include um, significant funds for that project uh, in our FY25 budget. It's scheduled to go out to bid later, uh, late winter. Um, so anticipated sometime either probably mid to late February uh, that they'll send it out to bid and maybe even into March and then the work is scheduled to be done night work sometime starting sometime after Memorial Day. So in addition to so it just get, keeps getting better with this whole thing so in addition to the to the expense of the rims and covers and the adjustments and the water valve adjustments we also learned from DOT because our initial conversations were that we would uh, we would include the cost of that in their bid. So, because of the difficulty of getting two separate contractors working in the same space, it made sense initially. It made sense to just wrap the adjustments into their bid. But now we're kind of having some second thoughts based on the cost. And in addition to the cost of the rims and covers and the adjustments and the water valve adjustments, they also, because it's in excess of $100,000, they informed us yesterday that we would also be responsible for the flagging or traffic control for that portion of the project. And, um, and then an, an additional 10%. Uh, so anyway. It brings the total project expense expectation for the city well over three hundred thousand dollars. So we have another. I have another meeting scheduled at this point. The only person that we've communicated with is the person who's responsible for the utilities portion of the project. Um, so we've reached out to others uh, in DOT to have a conversation uh, to find out what the you know what this is all about and. It's my understanding, 
and I haven't done the research yet because again most of this I just learned yesterday but it's my understanding that um, legislatively the DOT cannot fund the adjustments of utilities so because my initial my initial thought was well if we say no we're not going to do that what are you going to do about it? you're going to have to do it because they can't they can't come through and mill two inches and then put fresh pavement down on high street and not adjust the rims and covers of 60 plus sewer you know manholes because then the road's going to be worse than it is now so um but the response to that was that leg legislatively um dot cannot basically cannot touch manhole covers uh, they can't they can't fund it they can't pay for it it's the responsibility of the utility so May I ask a question, please? Sure. I understand the adjustment uh, on the height. What's the matter with the current rims and covers? Why can't they be reused? Some can, but some, uh, you know, it, it was, and again, we won't know until they actually <clears throat> mill, you know, you know, mill it away, but we do know that some of the rims and covers on High Street are in rough shape, have not been replaced. So the anticipation was that we would have some, we would have a number on hand to be able to replace them as the project goes, the ones that we discover, you know, need to be replaced. Um, but the the cost of the rims and covers is is minuscule compared to the cost of the adjustment because the rims and covers, Mike figured, to replace all of them would be in the, uh, I think he said in the sixty thousand dollar range to replace all of them with new rims and covers. But again. Compared to the cost of the adjustment, it's pretty, you know, small figures. What do you mean by adjustment? Raising them. Yeah, so they have to. They basically tear them down and then do new new brick and mortar and then to the proper adjustment and then set rings. Sometimes they'll do multiple rings in order to get the height that they need before they place the cover on. I'd just like to make a comment, if I may, um, about this whole thing. For the three years, about two years and a little bit that I've sat on the council, there's been a consistent um, complaint about the road structure in Ellsworth. And it has been, and I realize that's a state road, but I just want to throw this out there as maybe a little different view. It sounds like we're getting uh, quite a nice benefit to our city. Um, and the whole project, I don't know the cost of the mill and fill, but it's got to be over a million bucks. Absolutely. Right? And um, that's benefiting this city. And if we have to fork up $400,000, and I'm, I'm rounding up your number, mm -hmm. okay? If we have to fork up three fifty dollars or 400000 I realize that's a lot of money. But there's been consistent talk about better roads in Ellsworth, Maine. And we've got a partner here. And yes, it's unplanned, but isn't that what we want, is someone to come to town and uh, give us uh, pavement um, and help us? And um, the 350, let's say, around 400. Um, if, if we're going to... If, if this is going to happen, um, which it sounds like it's going to, and uh, I would think that we would be pleased if if we have a three fifty or four hundred thousand dollar not in this project, and the project is one point five million or what have you, we we're getting a million dollar benefit going through our town, and I'm using round numbers as you know, and um, and just to speak to um, Mr. Blake Chips. If we're going to pay the labor um, for the installation and the flaggers, for crying out loud, let's not put used gear in the ground. Let's make it new so we have new pavement, uh, new extensions or risers or whatever you want to call it, so that we have a good project for a long period of time. Um, that's just a, a, a mindset that comes to mind immediately. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I don't disagree with you at all. Um, I, I think it's, a, I mean, it would be, you know, biting our nose off to spite our face to, you know, um, 
to create too much hate and discontent with DOT so that maybe they pull the project. I'm not suggesting at all that we go to that extent, but I think we need to, for fiscal responsibility sake for the city, I think we need to push back a little bit on it because it was kind of sprung on us. Um, you know, they do have a ma as well as the city, they have a major interest in that thoroughfare being, you know, um, you know, being smooth for the tourism traffic and what have you. So, um, so I think our, you know, our kind of our approach is, yeah, we're not going to like, you know, flip them the bird or anything, but we are going to want to make sure that we at least give some pushback, some resistance to say, hey, you know, this is unplanned on our part, on our part, and you know, particularly the the cost of the flagging and some of these other things that are built into their project anyway. You know, why should we really absorb that cost, that additional cost, um, for our portion of the project? Um, so those are some of the things that we're you know we're more likely to push back on a little bit. We're also going to pursue a couple of options. So we're going to look at potentially um, our public works folks doing the work themselves, as opposed to contracting it out to see what that looks like. That's going to impact us. You know, it's going to impact the staffing from being able to do other projects around the city. But you know, can we can we work that into their work plan for the summer months to be able to absorb to be able to eliminate this exorbitant expense um, with our own staff and personnel? So that's one thing we're going to explore a little bit more um, it, closely to see if that's an option. Um, and then the other, you know, the other option is we're going to pursue some of our own um, estimates from, uh, you know, from contractors to see if, if there isn't maybe a cost savings for us in bringing in our own contractor rather than, you know, come getting into, wrapped into the DOT contract. So we're going to, one sec, we're just, yeah. we're going to take a look at those options to see if perhaps there's some cost savings there before we, you know, kind of bring the proposal to the council for funding. So, could I just absolutely fire yeah. a shot at that? And, and um, I just want to throw out um, this idea that, <clears throat> and I guess the best analogy is somebody building a home and decide they're going to be their only gen their own general contractor and. They're going to save money, and they've got everything lined up in the wrong spot, and it ends up costing them more money. And it would be my belief that you can't beat someone at their own game. And if that was in the um, state's project, we would have no disagreements going forward with the height of, of um, the risers by the contractor or by our people, and the job flows smoothly, and there's no holdups, and... Um, if you let the contractor manage the whole project, it may be 30,000 bucks more up front, but you eliminate all of this, he said, she said, they didn't do this right, the paving didn't fail, you're responsible. It's clean and simple. It may seem like the higher way to go in the beginning, but there's a lot of people that would like to be in Ellsworth, Maine, and have the state pave the road for tourism through their town. And I just strongly feel that you can't beat someone at their own game. And whoever does this job is very familiar with that process. And any contractor we hire um, may or may not be, and our guys may or may not be. Um, so it may seem awful, but this, to me, looks like a great opportunity uh, not to muck up the waters get good roads going through our town, and letting, letting the people do what they're good at. Now, whoever the contractor is may sub that out, they may not, but they would be the management people, and we would remove ourselves from trying to blend with DOT and have a half inch off and big arguments and foolishness. Um, just food for thought. I'm not saying I'm right. It's just something that we ought to consider. So I mean, ultimately, it's going to be a council dis decision. Uh, yeah. We'll bring we'll bring the information forward at some point, probably I would suspect in March, mm -hmm. um, on the agenda, and you all will ultimately make the decision as to what direction. What you part want. of um, 
our storm drain project is going to affect High Street because Mike was saying that we have to do that too. No, they DOT will adjust the storm drains. So as far as under under drainage, there isn't any there isn't any plan currently to address any under drainage issues. Um, the drainage on High Street is it, DOT installed it. That is a DOT responsibility, not necessarily the city. Um, we know that there are some um, plug plug drainage culverts and other things along High Street that do need to be backed and do need to be, you know, um, cleared out. But that's something that. So we don't have to do that as part of our project. That's something we can do post project. It's not anything that has to happen during the project. Okay. The only thing that would have to happen during the project would be if we were digging up, um, because there will be a three-year moratorium on, right. you know, digging into the into the street. But um, DOT will be doing all the adjustments for the drainage, storm drains. What about lights? Like our lights? Do we have any of the underground um, pressure plates for those draft plates? Are we all camera there? All, there? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, no, it's cameraed all the way through. Cameraed all the way okay, through. Okay, so we don't have to worry about yeah. any of that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it would be a good time yeah, the to last, replace those. If now, the last one that was pressured on High Street was, um, in the in the travel lane anyway, was the upper light. And when we paved the uh, upper portion from the railroad tracks down to main, uh, High Street, mm -hmm. we, uh, we replaced that with camera with that project. Okay. Good. So... Um, so yeah, so again, a lot of work still to be done on that, that particular project. In the process, we're also working with the OT on their other projects. Um, they're paving from the bridge all the way out through to Orland, um, but that's, we have very few utilities in that portion of road. It's basically from the bridge up to the top of the hill where we have utilities, uh, and it's only a handful. Um, so those and the, the um, mill is it's only an inch and a half so it's less so we will any adjustments that are necessary through that stretch we will be doing ourselves again it's only a handful um, and then they're also paving um, doing a thin set from which is no milling just basically putting fresh pavement down on top of what exists the length of the Surrey Road um, from the Route 1 intersection all the way out through to to Surrey, or maybe even in, as far as into Blue Hill. That portion of the road, uh, so we are working with DOT for that portion, and I think I've mentioned it before, to do a municipal agreement because of our water main project. So we, they won't be paving from the Bucksport Road, um, Surrey Road intersection, all the way, they'll start on the back, on the other side of Josie's Country Store, where our water main project ends, so that we don't have to worry about the moratorium we can do our water main project and then when we put the water main project out to bid we include paving in that bid and then DOT will reimburse us for the cost of the paving so uh, I haven't I've yet to see the municipal agreement but that's what we've discussed and that's um, what's what I'm expecting to see once I get the municipal agreement from DOT um, in addition, uh, well, I also had a meeting earlier in the week with um, with a e-waste company um, who uh, they 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 approached us about um, accepting e-waste at the transfer station, uh, specifically televisions, computers, printers, fax machines, and cell phones. Um, those items uh, are at no cost to the municipality. Um, we would process just they would be delivered we would pallet them up uh, we do have to we do have to store them like in a connex type of box uh, and then when we have a I think eight pallets full they come and pick them up and take them away um, and uh, it's a project that uh, this particular company is in most transfer stations within the state of Maine and um, a lot of transfer stations will charge a small fee because uh, the pickup cost is a hundred dollars, and then there's some, you know, there's some chart, some cost with the um, potentially with the rental of a Connex box or the purchase of a Connex box to store the equipment and stuff. 
So a lot of communities, he said, will charge a, a minimal fee for the disposal of that type of, of um, e-waste, and then we can, you know, potentially have a very, depending on what you set your costs at, or your prices at, you can have a little bit of a, a revenue stream to offset any cost to, to manage the program, employee costs and that sort of thing. Um, you know, some some communities might charge, you know, for a, a TV might charge five or ten dollars, and it doesn't cost us anything to dispose of for them to come and take it away, other than the hundred dollar for the trip. But it might be a way to generate a little bit, <coughs> little bit of revenue for the transfer station to help offset the cost of the operations of it. Um, in addition, you know, we could look at we talked about looking at a couple, maybe a couple um, events during the year where we invite surrounding communities to to bring their e-waste um, and you know and that could help to generate again generate some revenue to offset some of the costs of the transfer station so um, we talked to the gentleman he, pr he provided us a price list they ex they accept a lot of other stuff too um, but all of that stuff has a cost with it and it, batteries. batteries and um, like fluorescent light bulbs and a whole bunch of other stuff but all that stuff has a cost in it and Obviously, um, we'll they'll uh, we'll have a um, what's the uh, waste committee solid waste, solid waste committee meeting yeah. first to discuss it with them and then eventually bring it to the council um, to see what you know what the council's wishes are. The concern we had with the full list uh, one is the sorting nature of it becomes more labor intensive. Um, the other issue was the cost and the accounting. Right, so if you you know, if you get someone's got two fluorescent bulbs and they got to pay, you know, two dollars and eighty cents, let's just say, you know, or and then the accounting process to keep track of that money and and make sure that it's, you know, that the uh, all of it's sorted because it can't you can't just have the bulbs in with the computers. So it just compounds and makes the situation more complicated and more labor intensive than if we just take the e-waste, the free e-waste. If we stick with the free e-waste, that stuff can all be can lumped it together on one pallet and once we have I think it's eight pallets we call them up and within a couple of days they come and pick it up so um, so we'll again uh, schedule be scheduling it with Adam uh, myself we'll be scheduling a, a solid waste committee meeting present the information to those folks get their feedback get their opinions hopefully get their buy-in and then we'll bring it to the full council for um, for the council to either accept or deny and and decide whether we want to move forward with it. But I do see it, I think, with the e-waste portion, if we if we went with the free stuff, I, I do see it as one, I see it as a, a need in our community to get rid of a lot of that stuff in an affordable manner. Um, and I think, I think again, it could be a, a revenue source for the solid, for the transfer station to, to help offset the cost of running that, running that facility. Um, yeah, we, um, I'm on the Solid Race Committee, and they did talk about that last time, and it's been a long time. Um, we started talking about with Lisa while she was here, and we were all very much on, on board with the e-waste. I'm not sure about the household hazardous waste that you speak of, because I think there's some handling ways that I, I, I think they have to have like some protective gear, and Probably. so there would be, I think, additional costs for any household hazardous waste. And plus the issue is with storage, too, I think it has to have certain containment and yeah it, and they do they do this company does provide the training and what have you but but real I mean we have two people out there I think if we really went full on into all of that other you know that hazardous stuff I think it would probably lead to the requiring of, a, of an additional person just to handle and the sorting and everything to keep you know to keep the waste separated so um, maybe we can do some <clears throat> annual events there for that particular because we used to have an annual household hazardous and universal waste collection day, at which all the municipalities, I think it was handled by Hancock, Hancock County, County Planning Commission. Yeah. yeah. And so it would be good to have that set up because a lot of people ask, well, where do I get rid of paint? Where do I, you know. Yeah, we just did one with them, I would say two or three years ago, we did one um, at the high school. Okay. Uh, and uh, as part of the, um, The island communities, there's a group that I'm part of that I can't think of what it's called. Um, but they do one. And last year, for some reason, we, even though we're part of that group, we hadn't been included in it. 
Um, but at my last meeting, I had conversations, and they were looking. They were going to reach out to the vendor to make sure that when we do, when they do their next one, that we are Excellent. included. Okay. Um, so we'll have at least that option for our folks. I think last year they did it maybe down at the elementary, uh, Trenton Elementary School. Um, but um, to have you know to have this available all the time for you know this this limited e-waste, I think would be a huge benefit. So. Um, Don't waste that opportunity. Uh -huh. yeah, fine. Very fun. <laughs> He's got jokes I think that <laughs> is it. Uh, Monday night, local roads meeting. Uh, I encourage any counselor who's available to attend. Um, it starts at seven. It's a little bit late. Um, Monday night. Monday night. Yeah. Um, my my thought process is we have way too much information to try to cover in that one meeting without going into the wee hours in the morning. So my thought process is. We'll get the group together because they haven't met for a while. Um, we're going to give them an update on several things, an update on the uh, stormwater drainage project that Woodard and Curran did, an update on these DOD, DOT projects, uh, an update on paving, paving um, and get their feedback uh, on what roads, uh, you know, give them some information about where we're what we're looking at, get their feedback on what if any other roads um, they think should be of higher priority um, to start the process for the budgeting for budgeting for local roads um, but I think uh, you know in the concept of keeping that meeting within you know an hour and a half to two hours max we're going to need to schedule another meeting probably for the end of February uh, later in February to be able to you know really dive into the budgeting process, you know, the budgeting information, um, just DOT and those other projects, just getting them up to speed with that information is probably going to take the better part of an hour and a half. So, um, and to start at six. Yes. And we will start <laughs> earlier next time. Um, so that <coughs> meeting is coming up. So the walking path, um, update is also on yep. the agenda. Correct. Yes. That is also on the agenda. So it's a lot of material to cover. So I, again, I don't expect we're going to get too much um, accomplished as far as budgeting budgeting goes. But um, we'll be scheduling at that meeting. We'll schedule another meeting for a couple weeks out to make sure that we have plenty of time to get feedback from that group for uh, local roads budget for FY25. So. Hey, Glenn. Yes. Um, back on the, the high street project. Yep. I mean, I mean, that's just not new to us. Um, every time it's safe, the DOT's ever come in and done anything downtown, it's just an automatic um, item that we do. What if, did Mike Harris give an opinion on whether it's, um, his opinion on whether or not the DOT just handle the whole thing? Um. Yeah, he Mike couldn't re Mike couldn't recall the last time they went through High Street. Mike wasn't here in that capacity. Um, so he couldn't recall what the funding source was, um, and you know that's another thing that we'll be we'll be talking about uh, as we move this project forward. Is you know how exactly do we fund it? Do we fund it out of local roads, and then um, you know, and then do we uh, does the do, do the utilities reimburse you know reimburse the city over time for that expense? Because you know a two hundred thousand dollar expense. Uh, in in wastewater right now is you know is is a pretty pretty major hit to their to their budget and a budget that's already you know troublesome so um, so th those are the conversations but he he didn't recall I mean we understood that um, that it was expected that that utilities would be responsible for you know for this work um, we just go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying, because, I mean, when they, when they came down High Street, the last time we had to do it, when they did State Street, you know, we, we had to do it a, a lot. And we do, to, you know, for what um, Steve said, we do normally let DOT do it because it actually will come out cheaper than if we hire someone to do it and it's just their project because you have to pay for setup and everything. And right. And the DOT is part of their project, so those extra costs aren't in there. And, um... So, and then also, to Steve's point, he's exactly right, we don't get into a, a 
chicken contest with the DOT because we're holding up their project and then they're threatening to charge us the extra cost because of everything. But and then normally what we do is we, we do a, a, a quick borrowing. It's not I mean, a couple hundred thousand dollars, which I know I don't mean to be, you know, saying that that's not very much. But it's a quick borrowing that the utilities can pay over time and it doesn't affect their, you know, negatively affect their budget as much, and then the taxpayers don't pay for it at all. And it doesn't affect our, the, the budget, which is tight anyway. So, I I mean, that's just how it's been done in the past, and um, I just, I'm surprised that Mike doesn't know that, because whenever anybody's gone through and, and uh, paid for it, we have to deal with that. Yeah, well, again, Mike, Mike was aware that we had, that the cost was on us. He wasn't sure how um, in past experiences how it was funded because I don't I'm not sure when the last time we had this extent you know I mean like I said the the Bucksport Road project is you know is only eight or ten total as opposed to you know 68 rooms and covers on high street so um, you know borrowing we, we did talk about borrowing you know my only concern with borrowing right now is the interest rates are so astronomically high I'm, I'm not sure that you know, financially, that's the best way to go for this. But again, it's not a huge in the world in the scheme of things. I guess it's not a huge amount of money that we would potentially be borrowing. Um, and I don't. Uh, and also, you know, I would reiterate, I don't intend to um, create too much hate and discontent with DOT. I just want to make sure that they understand that you know this size of project, a little bit more lead time to clue us into that we were going to be you know expected to to finance this significant amount of of work in within their project would have been a little bit more advantageous for us i guess is the main yeah. is the main point yeah no i agree with that they, they must have changed their mind that they would do all this at once or something I've never seen them actually come in and do a municipality like that all at once yeah that, that much, but. yeah i mean the the work the work that they have on their work plan in the next two to three years in city in the city within the city of Ellsworth within our ur urban core city of Ellsworth is is pretty astounding um, and we certainly are appreciative of all of it um, but with all of that you know comes a lot of financial burden and responsibility on the city too to make sure that yeah. we get all of our ducks in a row I mean the Oak Street project is going to be huge and the and the stormwater drainage to deal with with that improvement and make sure that we're you know we're prepared for what they you know when they come through there is going to be a huge financial burden on the city and and they're going uh, next year's work plan i think in 2025 they're going out east main street all the way through to hancock so that's going to you know be a significant some significant work that the city's going to have to do with drainage up there so i mean there's a there's a lot that they've got going on and it kind of forces our hand to kind of prioritize some of our stuff too and make sure that we're prepared so um, so I think like I said I think it's great that they're doing it and we just need to figure out how we're gonna handle our side of it and um, and certainly borrowing is on the table and like I said ultimately it'll be you know the full council that'll make the decision and and steer us as to what direction they want us to go in to, to make sure that the projects completed so Madam Chair, I believe we remember the public. Yes, right? Charlie, would you like to just, say the something? The draft schedule has me at 8.30 with code enforcement assessing facilities. Yep. I didn't know if Glenn will yep, We'll catch up later. Okay, That's great. fine. Thank okay. you. Sure. I thought you had a solution. <coughs> yeah. <for this> issue. <laughs> <laughs> I just, one final comment about this subject from my behalf. I, I realize that it is a big cost to the city. However, there hasn't been much done in the last five years um, from what local roads say and and I've heard the story from local roads that we've kicked the can all the way down the road and it's hit the wall I've heard that story and I think we should be very thankful that we have this problem the DOT is coming to our town and they're helping us and yes it comes with a cost <coughs> but um, it's pretty rare that you could lay out, you know, a dollar and get the state to pay eight dollars. 
if you will. Uh, I, I think that there's something that needs to go into that. that and I'm using an analogy, it might be wrong, maybe we need to put $2 out and the state's putting eight in. But what a blessing. I think it's, like you said, it's a good problem to have, but I also I appreciate Glenn's you know, just trying to keep oh. us fiscally as responsible as possible. And it sounds, yeah, it sounds like something we can work out and uh, bring to the whole council. And, and just one other thing too is, um, and, and I agree with you, guys. Um, but um, when this comes to the full council for a decision, there is going to be a uh, recommendation asked for from the finance committee. So, um, so just as a, as a reminder, this, this is the type of thing that we have. This is the reason for the for the um, finance committee to to go over this information with you and come up with a recommendation for the council. Sure. So. Is that this isn't the final, the, are we basing our recommendation on this? No. Yeah, so we've got more time. Yeah, we've got more work done. Yeah. 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 Plus yeah. with the local roads, we might have more information in the local roads committee meeting. And yeah. yeah, local, right. it, well, it'll be discussed at local roads and we need the, you know, I just had this meeting with DOT on Monday and when it was kind of sprung on us, the, we knew we knew but the additional costs were sprung on us because it was going to be in excess of a hundred thousand we did that was not on our radar um, and I just you know so Monday I'll meet with Public Works again a lot of that meeting will be going over this information refining the the data and the um, figures and then we'll talk Monday night at the local roads committee meeting and so by um, you know long before it ever goes to the full council uh, we'll have, you know, I'll have all of the detailed information on expense, exact costs, and um, for you all to, to think about and options of, you know, we'll explore what it'll cost potentially to borrow. Uh, so we'll have that information. Uh, we'll have information about, um, again, uh, exploring the possibility of our staff doing the work. And then we'll have some estimates from um, some contractors. Um, to go outside of the DOT contract, and then hopefully by then we'll have some more information about the DOT contract bid. So, <clears throat> so a lot more detail to come, but uh, it's just uh, today I mostly want to just put it on your radar and let you know that you know that it is, you know, we are staring down the barrel of a pretty significant unbudgeted um, cost that m we may or may not have to uh, allocate prior to the FY25 budget depending on when the bids come in and when the work's scheduled to be completed. So that's all I have. Can I ask a question about the eclipse planning? See, uh, attended joint TIM meeting for eclipse. Oh, TIMS, yeah. TIMS is a, uh, is, a, is a local committee that actually the DOT also puts together. It's uh, for emergency management for mm -hmm. crash scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so They're anticipating a bunch of people coming or that the eclipse might cause crashes? No, the, the eclipse is not, it, that's an acronym for something. Oh. It's not dealing with the actual oh, eclipse. I was like, I, so we're not in the path of totality. I don't no. think it's a problem. <laughs> no, it's I, in Vermont. No, that's, no, it's up in Holton. Oh, it's yeah. It's in Vermont, too. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Of course, Texas. Yeah, I know. I'm really excited about the eclipse. Oh, me too. <laughs> no, it's, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but okay. that's, that's an acronym okay. for for some other if emergency If there isn't planning. an eclipse planning, the actual eclipse, let me know. I'd like to attend this. Okay. <laughs> Will do. If I hear of any, I'll let you know. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Okay. Here's one for you. You'll pass that down. Thank you. Okay. So most of my time since I've been back has been spent on uh, the transition out of Munis and into Casal. So I've been doing a lot of um, accounting and finalizing and posting uh, journal entries that were left over from audit. Uh, I also have been working on the budget with some of the department heads. We, they've submit, most of them have been submitted along with project requests. Um, and I will be at the local roads meeting. I have a presentation for it with pictures and numbers. And so Adam asked me to help him with that. So I'll be doing that if anyone is interested in coming to that. It'll 
visual on what, what we're dealing with. Um, and then we had to resubmit uh, the data, the paperwork for our Christian Ridge reimbursement. The instructions that we were given originally apparently weren't correct. So now they are correct and work's been corrected. So that, still waiting for that money, that's 475000 that we're hoping to see come in soon. Um, already working on the fiscal year 23 audit and my capital improvement plan is about to go online. So that'll be up by the 15th of this month so you'll have a chance to look at it before we start on budget. And that also will have numbers and pictures and recommendations from the department heads that are involved in those various projects. Um, we finally got the Moore Center bill billing that was in arrears for about five years caught up. So now we have a number to offset the money that we subsidize them with every year. And uh, like Glenn said, I'm working with um, Cassell and with the auditors to get the Munis budgets translated into Cassell so that by the time you guys see them, it makes sense with the new chartered accounts. And uh, my next big project now that the Moore Center one is done is the reconciliation of the TIFFs. There were some uh, irregularities in them from last year that we have to get to the bottom of. I just haven't had a chance to do that, so that's my next project. And that's it. All kinds of exciting stuff. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I missed it before I got here. Do we have a... Where are we at on the audit? You said we're going to, I guess... This is uh, fiscal year 23. He says we'll have it by March. By yeah, so March, we should so. have it for our budget. So we actually have it audit we need for budgeting this year. Right. Well, that's you'll great. have 23. We'll have 23. And then we'll have preliminary numbers from 24, which a lot of that's probably going to get done manually. Okay. So, I'm making an uh, we're making an offer today on uh, the new deputy finance director. The last offer that we made, he ended up backing out because he couldn't find housing. Which is strange. Um, but the new guy, we in the, we had another interview with him this week, and we d directly addressed that with him, that they've got a plan, and he didn't seem to have that reservation or that, that issue that the last guy did, so. Feeling good Hopefully. about it? I hope so. All right. Yeah. I Cross your so. fingers. I need the help. Not gonna <laughs> For yeah. sure. Um, just a couple of things. So I've been texting with Amy. I told her I'd like to have her come to the Finance Committee and um, present. You know, I'm sure they'll have a pretty good idea of what their budget is and what they're kind of expecting. So, we've, you know, any surprises she needs to give us an update on. And, and so she's planning, I think, within the next couple of weeks to come and, and do some sort of presentation. So she's pulling all that information together. Um, so as part of the budget process too, um, so we would like to see like what was budgeted per year, but also uh, you know the actuals. And I think we talked about that before, but maybe even for like the, the school. No, I'm sorry. On to the city budget. Okay. <laughs> sorry, um, I have like a headache, so my brain's not functioning properly. Okay. Um, so maybe like the past five years to kind of get an idea of which departments are you know, growing at a quicker rate um, or, you know, some that are decreasing, but we'd like to kind of have that sort of analysis of why those, okay. if there are any irregularities there. Um, some discussion, I'm going over that email that um, Casey had sent. Um, I think that will come with the budget meetings. Um, the council would like, we think the council needs to review the process of social social services funding um, because it's kind of like all over the place. And so I think it would be we a good idea. We separated it out, didn't we? That was the, mm -hmm. That's how I set it up. Yeah. For, for this yeah. And just how they present. Some of them came um, to do their presentation. I, I just think it would probably be a good discussion to have with the entire council at a council meeting. How do we want to see the social service? If you request money, I know you did a new form. And how um, best way to move forward? Either have them come, or yeah, they're asking me. Every one of them's asking me if they 
need to come and I told him that we would get back to them, on, that I would get back to them mm -hmm. on, and that we would post it on our website as well. Yeah, we definitely need to make a decision for it all. Yeah. Kind of comes together before we but redo we that. We are have we what you're gonna see from them in terms of the application this year is gonna be a lot more robust than mm -hmm. and it's gonna be uniform. Instead of, you know, some people like, hey we need ten grand and then like the other people are submitting their financials and you mm -hmm. know, a narrative to go with it. So now everybody's kind of in line to submit the same kind of thing. If they don't submit it, they're not considered. And I've sent out emails and made phone calls and talked to everybody from, from Life Fight, Life Flight to Friends in Action to, you know, uh, Northern Light. So they know. Mm -hmm. And it's been up on the website for a couple months to form, well, along with the deadline, which is the 16th of February. Okay, so that's coming right back to you. So. We discussed last week that we may not have a finance committee meeting next week because of the tr transfer. Is this there's no warrant next yeah, week. Yeah, there's no warrant next week. No, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and Steve had suggested mm -hmm. that, you know, making sure we have everything paid up um, as much as possible. Um, so we, for that two week gap. Yeah. We, as right, you can you see. wasn't yeah. here for that. That good point. Yeah. She wasn't here. But it that. seems like this is a pretty looks like maybe that's what's happened here. I just wanted to confirm yeah. that. Yeah, this is a, you know, yeah, more use robust a warrant. Yeah, this is a good one. So, okay, so that was part of, all right, yeah. excellent. So Getting that's, caught yeah. up. Yeah. That's one great. of the bills on there, the big one that you see for T-Buck, yeah. uh, T-Buck's bidding on High Street, so I think they're the only one bidding on High Street. Okay. So we really didn't, didn't want to get sideways with them, Keep and them that bill okay. was from November. So. Okay, great. Just wanted to confirm <clears throat> Thank you. Two quick points mm -hmm. I'd just like to comment on the social services part that mm -hmm. you said. Um, <clears throat> I just would like to reinforce the fact that if we are giving Mr. and Mrs. Ellsworth money um, to agencies that help the city, there's nothing wrong with us setting the ground rules, much like what you're trying to do. I think that, um, you know, if we if social services goes to Bangor, there are ground rules. There's nothing wrong with setting the ground rules and sticking to it. Um, here's the ground rules. This is how we want it presented. Um, if you don't do it, you're not considered. The second point I'd like to make is uh, um, I set in on union, beginning union negotiations. Um, yesterday and Glenn I thank you privately but I'd like to thank you publicly having never sat in on a union meeting in my life I really appreciate what you did for the city and for myself giving me the contracts and giving me a, a little quick brusher um, that was incredibly helpful to me to have that ring binder that you gave me and that you made for me and I thank you very much very wonderful. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you were still thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, do you have anything? No, nope, all set. Nothing. Michelle? Do you have anything? Sorry, I'm on you. That's okay. <laughs> it's like I can't hear you. <laughs> no, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. All right. Just Oh. Two quick things that came to mind while we were um, talking. We did reach out to Northern Light uh, Medical Transport um, just to start that process because oh, that excellent. contract ends January 30th. Um, That's so our ambulance? Ambulance service. January yep. 30th? I'm sorry, June. June 30th. Oh, 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 That's gone by. <laughs> apologize. The end of the fiscal year. Um, so we have reached out um, to get them uh, at the table. And uh, I will be reaching out in uh, the next few days um, to Matt at the Y, also to start that conversation about the Moore Community Center, uh, and because that contract agreement, lease agreement with them ends in August. Um, and some staff um, in the school department have all come up with some options uh, that they'd like to take a look at for potential use of space 
in the more community building. So, okay. so I'll be reaching out to Matt just to start that process and at least put it on their radar because I'm not sure where he's new, how familiar he is with the, you know, with the that contract and the fact that it expires in August. So, just wanted to update you on those two Thank you. items. Um, it's back to if we don't have a warrant next week. I know we have other things to talk about, but I can't be here. So, um, and you're gone too, Michelle, right? No. Not next week? I'm here in the morning, no? Oh, okay. I won't be here. Oh, Glenn's not going to be here. I won't be here either. So maybe we just need to cancel it now and then tell Amy um, to come the following week? Yep. That works for me. Does that work for you too, Michelle? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Um, hey Glenn, I'd like to be on that committee to negotiate. I think I told that before. Yeah. For the contract. For the Moore building. Yes. Please. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you. We had talked about it before, so I'll okay. absolutely ensure that once I have an opportunity to have a conversation with Matt, that um, I let you know, and if you yourself and maybe other council members want to be participate as well, so I will let you know. Okay, thank you. Yep. I'd like to be involved as well. Okay. Excellent. Good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But we um, all of us. we should talk about setting up a solid waste committee. Yeah. Talk about that e-waste. Yeah. Stuff. That'd so, be great. Um, I, we can talk about it. That's okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank great. you. Thanks, Glenn. Yes. Thank you. Now. Bye, bye, Michelle. Thanks, bye. Michelle. Bye. bye. Thank you. Sure. Do you happen to know what the wood